Okay, welcome back to the community theater. So it's great pleasure to introduce Will Hall. Um, he is our local community leader in Cambridge. So normally it's him standing, introducing, introducing all the other speakers at our local meetup. So I'm introducing him today. Um, so he's a principal DevOps engineer at Cyan Canode, and he's going to talk about using Docker to begin to solve hardware IoT issues. Thanks very much, Stephen. Um, yeah, so same accents, right? Kind of same accents. Now, who amongst us here do you think has IoT devices in their houses, and who's looking at getting them? Because unless you're living off grid, you're probably going to have one whether you want it or not at some point. And also, if you do a picture, my kids would love to see it. They think this is about my fifth presentation of the year in different places, and they uh, keep pretending that they don't believe I go and do it. I just go and talk about computers to my friends and go away for four days. Um, so, yeah, you're going to have IoT whether you want it or not. And I think that's both a good and a bad thing for, for different reasons. But IoT is going to have so many promises and so many challenges as we move forwards. Um, there's big problems with regards to connectivity and ensuring that we can get reliable connectivity, whether that's from expecting our IoT devices to become independent from, let's say, your home networks, or whether they're going to be attached to your home networks. Um, every time I see something about IoT, it normally seems to be mentioning the fact that it is a swear word that I'm not going to say. But there's a big Twitter account, and you can see about IoT. And, and security has become a big problem with that. Uh, alongside the standardization and really the, the product life cycle because it's very easy, or at least I understand it to be very easy uh, in my past life to switch out an application that you had for another application. But it's really, really difficult to switch out a car or a washing machine or an electricity meter inside your house for another one if it doesn't quite work right. Um, because my assumption is that most people here don't know what CyanCanode does, we do IoT smart metering in terms of we run an IPv6 uh, network mesh for connecting IoT devices. And I don't know how many people are involved in uh, live in the UK. The UK is rolling out smart meters. If you don't have a cellular connection, you're getting a cyan canode connection to the network, at least. Um, and we're also involved heavily in India with their smart cities projects. So we've got quite a lot of um, experience with working in, in networks um, and also looking at how the next level of IoT can be delivered. Um, I'm going to talk quickly about some nodes, gateways, and servers. This is kind of to do with how the network connects, and hopefully you would see at the end how we're able to move more to kind of simulating that network. Um, so we've got nodes as end devices, which would be something like a electricity meter in your house. We would have gateways that are somewhere local to you um, that work negotiating the connection between your end node and the gateway, and then we have centralized servers that are you know, being used to collect your data. This is a, an illustration of a network that's um, being spec'd out for us at the moment. You can see the, what's the, the pin dots are gateways, the squares are you know, individual units, and you can see as we kind of zoom in that they're being connected to each other slightly differently. Um, so what this is trying to illustrate is that there is a network of devices around you um, that are connecting IoT services with the central providers. This is a, a general kind of simplified version of that mesh network and how we're showing that the, the items are connected together with servers and gateways and nodes and it connects over RF, so it has a, a greater range, but a less ability to transmit data. And you can also see that nodes actually have the ability to pass their data from each other. 
Um, and a gateway maxes out somewhere around 500 nodes connected to it. Now, we have a server application stack as well that's got C in it, and it's embedded Linux, and we've got Java, and we've got Python. But it's not really why we're here to talk about things. Um, really, my interest is in Christmas trees. This is uh, my Christmas tree at home. You can see that obviously, you know, I'm really good at decorating Christmas trees. Uh, I don't think that would go badly in a shop window. No? Well, actually, I didn't decorate it. My kids did. So now you can feel bad about you know, the fact that you just said he's not very good at Christmas trees. It's only five. I've got a five-year-old and a one-year-old. Um, OK. So really, the hardware problems come from what we're terming in Cyan Canode as Christmas trees, which is a whole bunch of hardware screwed to boards attached to walls that have lights on them. And that's our Christmas trees. It's Christmas all year round in the office. And this is what desks look like. Whether you can pick out on here, but we've got a whole range of different meters. And not only is this a little bit, uh, you definitely have to go through a secure, a what, health and safety awareness thing, but you have to have all of the space for these and have all the devices. And that's really, really challenging. And if anyone thinks I've faked this, this is, my desk is on the left of this. I don't have any meters, but uh, th they love meters. So really, our problem in IoT in terms of hardware issues is the fact that we can't get enough devices. Now, when we're deploying, we're deploying uh, hundreds of thousands of, of units. And that was a developer's desk, and he has about nine. Um, and if you can imagine, we also need to generate load on those units to be able to test anything and simulate how our networks work. Add to that, we've also got different variants of the devices that we're using. So we're not limited to one single device that may pass over the network. We've got you know, different manufacturers and providers, different networks that they may travel on, and different firmwares that are installed. So really, this is emulators to the rescue, where we're using emulators to connect to our agents on the devices, and we can get a standardized interface with them. They're configurable for us. We can change them however we want. They're low cost compared to, you know, each of those meters is about $400, $320, pounds, something like that. So you're not sitting with a load of hardware on your desk that is a kind of a, a big capital expenditure. Um, and you can write them in C or Python, the kind of uh, emulators. But that doesn't really deliver the requirements of an IoT network. That's almost like just having another meter on your desk. Um, and that's really where, at the moment, Docker is coming in for us, where it's giving us the ability to be scalable with those emulator systems and to start distributing them across different networks so that we can get the kind of scale and delivery issues that we may want. Um, and we can start running with different images, which is simulating different manufacturers, different builds, different firmware. We're able to move them to different, totally different networks, see what it's like if we only had it connected on a 2G connection or less, which is, you know, an RF network is, is normally slightly less than 2G, so that's not a lot of data throughput. So this was our mesh network deployment that we saw earlier, um, which hopefully has, has been a bit better explained on how each one of these end nodes is an actual device on a de developer's desk. And then this is more how we're structuring them with containers, so we're able to leverage the massive potential for repeating ourselves, um, which if you ask people at any of my presentations, I try not to do. Um, and we can actually scale out these networks across different places to deliver what we need in terms of 
testing and network um, stability. So as you saw a developer's desk earlier with lots of networks uh, and with lots of nodes on it and meters, we now have the developer's desk with a cactus. And uh, this is not a real developer's desk because that's far too well lit. Uh, all the blinds are closed because the, I think because they like to focus on, on the screens in front of them. Um, so it's locally or semi-locally or not at all locally because Docker's running both locally and kind of semi-locally in terms of you can distribute it to other places or you could distribute the whole stack to somewhere else. Now, when you've started simulating, what you're actually doing in terms of getting over the changes is you're, you're reducing the barrier to entry. So we could have people working on the systems who don't have meters to test their systems against, who want to be able to develop maybe other systems that are also using a similar network, but they don't have access to meters and they don't have access to the whole range of meters with a whole range of firmware. We're able to distribute to them a container and, and we all know how uh, that makes the, the, the possibilities for um, enabling developer environments to be so much greater. We're also able to start to load test our environments and, and see what happens when we run at scale in a uh, clear environment that's not actually going to impact someone who may be trying to boil their kettle at the same time and we're trying to send data to their uh, smart meter. Um, and we're delivering what I think is actually becomes a lot of business value as well because you can start to show this to your customers um, and you can also start to integrate it with other people's um, devices and also the end, um, the end data producers systems. So we've now got a way that we could send anyone an example of our network and they can look at integrating with our APIs without needing to be a hardware vendor with a hundred units that are inside their shed. Um, we actually do have a big shed. Um, so you can also start to change how you're doing things. So let's say we want to start running with different firmwares or we want to start running with bad data. Now, if we destroy our nodes in our developer desk uh, scenario, those nodes might be gone and we might need to wait six weeks for another range of nodes. And that's going to be a, a big drain on our, both our momentum in terms of developing systems, but also it's going to be a big loss in terms of capital expenditure that we've already had to pay out for more nodes and more nodes and don't break those nodes again. Um, and it's gives the ability to understand more how developers' changes would impact the scale of the system. So in terms of IoT, there becomes a big scale change when you move from 100 to 1,000 and 1,000 to 10,000 and 10,000 to 100,000 and then 100,000 to a million requires different ways of working that Docker enables us to do, but if we can't test it, we're not um, running a, a web application that I can bombard from, from regularly known services. We're running kind of proprietary networks that I need to be able to test. Now, in terms of what's coming next for our terminal emulator, which I'm always driving them for, for the next thing. You know, we have a terminal emulator at the moment. It does some of these jobs really well. There are some other areas I'd really like it to do in terms of, you know, can we integrate more earlier with the actual device manufacturers? Could we start to be proactive in our device changes and work as a liaison between those systems? Um, can we 
get more of a, a visual representation of status that's going to be giving people uh, a real world experience with emulated devices. And you know, there is also the, the area where could we start to move part of that infrastructure to an edge device? So could we move it into a gateway and have the ability to integrate with the gateway and the gateway negotiate those connections and be able to be far easier upgraded because at the moment we're still doing, we're doing IPv4 connections out to the gateways in, in a lot of scenarios. Obviously that does take some caveats uh, at the moment. We're, we're running an IPv6 native network and that has the problem that it needs IPv6, which everywhere doesn't have, and also <clears throat> to deliver IPv6 over IPv4, we have a network piece, but that doesn't integrate with everything all of the time, so you're load balancing, trying to manage two different kinds of networks becomes more challenging. Um, and also we're talking about trying to do standardized devices because standardization really gives us the tools to be able to work collectively on solving problems rather than just solving the problem for a, a, a single solution and a single vendor. Um, and it's part of what really the, the ability to roll out IoT requires is standardization. It's, it's what's happening in India and we, we negotiate with the standards creators there and it's part of what's happened in the UK and my expectation is that standards have to drive that going forward. So what I've tried to give here is, a, is really a, a look into how IoT simulation of networks really gets so f much further because Docker becomes an extension of that network. Um, there are some problems, I'm going to say, with the life cycle of devices. Um, and there are some problems at the moment, I think, with the fact that people can't change their systems very quickly. But when we're able to communicate on that similar level and give our developers the tools that they need without requiring hardware and be able to change and upgrade their systems, it really starts to begin to, to deliver a lot. And so that's the end of my time. Does anyone have any questions? I mean, w one thing I'd like to highlight is, is uh, at the moment, we're not running our containers into clusters because of IPv4, IPv6 issues that we're still having. But it's, it's working well for us at the moment, and we're hoping for the, the, the kind of the improvements in networking to be able to deliver our solutions even faster in the future. Any questions, anyone? Excellent. Oh, no there was a question, oh, I think, at the back. How many um, IoT provider, uh, hardware providers do you integrate in your solution? Is it a pain point? Or because you told about standards, my guess is uh, this market is not standardized well for now, but I, that's an open, an open question. Uh, uh, I'd say the standardization is relative. There is some uh, harder standards that a lot of meter manufacturers maintain in terms of, you know, if you want to do a, a UK standard meter, then you have to be in the UK standards. If you want an Indian standard, they have to be in the Indian standards. But there are kind of edges to the extensions that they're providing specifics. So I'd say there's, you know, we've probably got 70% standards, 30% edges of those standards. Hopefully, and we're, we're working with probably eight to 10 different manufacturers of, of devices. All right, thank you very much, Will. Thank you.